my FPL Game Week 33 team selection. We have the double coming up in Game Week 34, then another double in Game Week 35, and today we have had a double Game Week in 37 confirmed as well. So not only are we going to have a look at my team for the upcoming week, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means for our teams going forward, what teams I'm going to be looking to target this week, next week, and on my wildcard, which I'm going to be playing in Game Week 35 as well. What is up everyone, FPL Harry here. Now, before we dive in, I've actually got something to show you. Now, those of you aware, about a month ago now, I hit 100K subscribers and today was the day that the YouTube plaque did turn up. I just wanted to show it to you again, another opportunity for me to say a massive thank you to you all. How grateful I am for all the support on the channel. Recently, since the four years that I've started, it is crazy. And now I've got that to commemorate the journey that we have been on and that we've only just started. There are many more years to come. I thank you for those of you who have been here for the four years, those of you who have been here for a year. Thank you for joining. And I'm excited to see where we can take it over the next years and see seasons to come. Now, quick review of game week 32 before we go any further. Pickford in goal. I took a minus eight for him last week. He came with in a nice eight pointer. Saka, Luis Diaz as well came in for me this week in place of Phil Foden. Decided to captain Mo Salah on my deadline stream over Cole Palmer. Wasn't a massive swing between them, but that combined with the double Arsenal defence was enough to give me 74 points overall. Did give me a reasonable sized green arrow up from 15k to just out Outside the top 10k. Cannot say I'm in the top 10k yet because I think I'm 10,083rd in the world. That Pedro Porro goal late on Sunday evening did knock me out of the top 10k. However, I cannot complain. I've still got the wild card to play in game week 35, then the bench boost to play in game week 37. So this was a real positive and fingers crossed we can continue to move from here. Now, as I mentioned, the doubling game week 34 next week and then the doubling game week 35 we had confirmed last week. And now today we have had a double in game week 37 confirmed as well. This means that the schedule between now and the end of the season has officially been confirmed. Of course, there could be something crazy that happens like weather or um, anything that's caused postponements in recent seasons. But for now, this is the schedule between now and the end of the season. Nothing really should change. So we do have six teams as expected doubling in game week 37. Brighton, Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City, Spurs and Newcastle. Six teams doubling then. Of course, there are two teams that double twice being Chelsea and Spurs doubling in game week 35 and in game week 37 as well. Now, if you are looking to play and you don't have your wild card left, Chelsea and Spurs might be quite important. You will be looking to keep the likes of Cole Palmer and Heumann Son, despite them having difficult fixtures in game week 34 and not doubling as well. I personally am wildcarding, as I've said many times, in game week 35, so I don't have to worry about those later doubles. I'm just focused on the next two weeks. I have one free transfer this week and one free transfer next week, and the transfers remain the same. I'm not going to bang on them about them too much, but Son and Haaland will be my transfers over the next couple of weeks. Haaland to a forward, probably Darwin Nunes. There is, of course, a risk with Diego Jota coming back. If I think that risk is too great for me to go and buy Darwin, which I think is very, very unlikely, then I'll go and buy Mateus Cunha of Wolves, who's probably my next best bet, given that I already own Dominic Solanke and I already own Mateta as well. Son is likely to go. Again, Eze is the number one option, but of course, Eze has Liverpool this week. So if I was forced into a transfer for any reason, I'd probably go Sarabia over Eze just based off, you know, Wolves having a better fixture this week. But my plan is to roll the transfer in game week 33. The only thing that would change that is if we got news before the game week 33 deadline that Erling Haaland or Heung-Min Son were not going to start. Feels like the risk to Erling Haaland is slightly higher just because the Manchester City game in the Champions League midweek. Phil Foden as well is a little bit of a doubt for that one as well. We'll be rating for the press conference on Friday and the final decisions video before we decide what people should potentially do with the likes of Erling Haaland and Phil Foden and even Kevin De Bruyne who did miss out in the Champions League through illness as well. So plan on rolling my transfer unless we hear that Haaland isn't going to start then Haaland to Darwin will be my one free transfer this week. Do fancy keeping Son for that Newcastle away fixture and then I can bring in Eze for his nice double of West Ham and Newcastle next week. 
Now, having a look at my team for game week 33, just before we do that, this video is very kindly being sponsored by NordVPN. You have seen NordVPN sponsor the channel this season. That is because the VPN service that I use and it is the fastest VPN service in the entire world. Now, whether you are wanting to keep yourself safe online, protect yourself from those trying to steal our passwords and those digital pickpockets, or you travel a lot and you want to keep up to date with your latest shows, you can do all of that with NordVPN. I love to do it to make sure I'm watching all the football highlights and I can make the best decision possible for my FPL team every single week. NordVPN allows you to do that and they are offering exclusive discounts at the moment. Using my link that is in the description, you can get exclusive deals, discounts when you sign up and up to four months free as well. And unlike FPL, you buy a player and you don't like what you've got, NordVPN does have a fantastic 30 day money back guarantee. So if you are interested, there is a link in the description. You can get exclusive discounts and up to four months free as well. Now, looking at my team for this weekend, at the moment, we've still got Ariola in goal. I'm going to play him over Jordan Pickford just because it is a better fixture, and I hope that Ariola is going to start, although I think it is very unlikely. Into defense, it does kind of pick himself itself, and I do expect Gusto to come back in for Chelsea. He has Everton at home this week with Ben White and Gabriel. Now, they conceded two goals in the Champions League, and I'm sure they'll be looking to get back to their defensive solidity ways that we've seen over the past couple of weeks well actually the past couple of months in the Premier League into midfield Bakai Saka completes that triple up on Arsenal at home to Aston Villa he has been getting early subs he was limping again after the Champions League but don't see him getting a rest any games between now and the end of the season so he's just going to have to hobble through in the Arsenal team and in my FPL team for the time being Cole Palmer on the Monday night along with Gusto for Chelsea. Hume Min Son, who I do fancy away at Newcastle. And then Luis Diaz and Mo Salah. Of course, no Phil Foden. So I am fingers crossed that he does miss out for Manchester City. Even just rested on the bench for them because could do a lot of damage if he does start at home to Luton. Up front, we have Haaland and we have Dominic Solanke. Not much to talk about on the bench. We've got Pickford to sub in. For Ariola, if I don't think Ariola is going to start. Mateta has Liverpool away. He's an okay first sub. Liverpool are leaking goals. Palace have scored some goals against Liverpool in the past. Of course, he scored against City last week. So Barney at home to United will be my first defender sub. And Doughty is away to Manchester City. Now, the only final thing to discuss is what I'm going to do with the Camps armband. At the moment, it is on Erling Haaland and Mo Salah is the vice captain. But there is growing concerns in my mind about Erling Haaland's minutes. Even if he does start against Luton, a 60-65th minute sub given that they do play on Wednesday in the Champions League against Real Madrid I do have that concern Mo Salah is easily the second best option in my team Cole Palmer would then get the vice captaincy if I decided to move the Campsy armband off Erling Haaland onto Mo Salah that might be something I have to decide after the press conferences on Friday or even on my deadline stream on Saturday morning because we might get a leak of the Manchester City team news which would be very very useful for those of us with Haaland those of us with Phil Foden as well. So for me, Haaland is captain at the moment, unless we hear that he's not going to start or I get too concerned about his minutes this weekend. Mo Salah would be the one to take the armband in his place, who's my vice captain at the moment. So because not massive planning for me on wildcarding in game week 35, we're not going to do a future projection section in this video. We're just talking about my two transfers over the next few weeks, I am planning on rolling my transfer this week unless we hear that Erling Haaland is not going to start. And then Darwin Nunes will likely be his replacement. Once again, thank you so much again for the 100k subscribers. The plaque, the whole thing is just, yeah, mind-blowing. I can't say thank you enough times. If you have any questions about your team as well, I'm on a train for about three hours a day. So drop all the questions you have in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to get back to as many of those as I can. Like the video before you go. Subscribe if you are new around here and I'll be back again very soon.